Believe it or not, everything that we use today is based on older technologies. And those older technologies were based on even older technologies. Ancient people didn't necessarily have steel or electronic communications like we do, yet they built monuments even bigger than Stonehenge. They raised huge stone heads in Easter Island and gave them hats. And ancient Egyptians built the pyramids with huge mystery rooms inside. Do you think that computers are a modern invention? What about sound chambers that can amplify what somebody says by a hundred times or more? Or a calendars that can be recalibrated from one year to the next. Nanotechnology, cataract surgery, flexible steel yet can cut through a handkerchief in midair, or how about a flying machine equipped with a manual for traveling long distances? All of these inventions sound modern, but they're not. They're ancient, and they confound modern researchers. We don't know the function of many of these ancient inventions, how they were made, or how ancient people lacking modern technology could have made them. For now, much is left to speculation. Today, we're going to be talking about ancient technology that we still have no clue how it works today. The list below Below features mysterious ancient inventions, unexplained ancient discoveries, and some other finds that are still baffling scientists in the 21st century, but not because they're a sign of alien tech. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we post. So if you're ready to learn more about these mind-blowing ancient inventions and more, please look for a chair and don't leave the screen because you'd be surprised to find out what mysterious inventions existed back then that scientists still can't explain today. First up, we have the mother of ancient high technology, Antikythera device. In 1900, divers exploring a shipwreck off the Greek island of Antikythera discovered a mysterious device that appeared to be the world's very first computer. It was a metal disc with a complex system of gears and appeared to be over 2,000 years old. Researchers have spent decades trying to uncover the mysteries of the Antikythera device, but they still can't determine its function or how to use it. It may have been connected to the zodiac and phases of the moon, along with lunar and solar eclipses. But to this day, we just don't know. Then we we have the first calendar that may be over 10,000 years old. A 2004 excavation in Aberdeenshire, led by the National Trust for Scotland, unearthed a calendar that probably belonged to a Stone Age person over 10,000 years ago. The calendar is a 50 meter long parchment that shows the phases of the moon as well as the solar months. The whole parchment depicts one year of solar and lunar cycles, but it was detailed enough that users could recalibrate the lunar and solar calendars each year. The calendar used 10 day weeks, roughly three per month, to align the moon's phases. Next is nanotechnology. In the 1950s, the British Museum in London acquired a 1,600-year-old Roman chalice known as the Lycurgus Cup that appeared to change colors depending on the light. If it was lit from behind, it was jade green, but if it was lit from front, it was a deep blood red. Researchers at the British Museum were stumped as to the cause of this phenomenon. In the 1990s, researchers studying broken fragments from the cup found that the answer lied in an ancient use of nanotechnology. The Roman craftsman who had built the cup had ground down gold particles until they were only 50 nanometers across, less than one thousandth the size of a grain of salt. The precision of the work indicates that by the time the cup was made, the Romans were masters of nanotechnology. We also have the steam engine. The Aeolia pile, or hero's engine, was named after Aeolus, the ancient Greek god of the winds, by Hiron Alexandrius, also known as the hero of Alexandria. The Aeoli pile contained a sphere and nozzles that would shoot out steam. The steam emitted by the nozzles created the torque necessary for the sphere to spin on its axis. At a certain point, the sphere would rotate at a stable speed, with a maximum speed of 1500 rotations per minute. The steam engine was reinvented in 1577 by the Arab polymath Taki Aldin. Next is the earthquake detector, which could be over 2000 years old. In ancient China, a polymath named Zhang Heng designed a giant metal vessel about six feet across to detect earthquakes. It had eight dragons snaking down the outside of it, and in each of their mouths was a bronze marble. An earthquake would loosen the balls, and the dragons would drop them into the receiving mouths of bronze toads. While the semiscope was unable to predict earthquakes, Quakes, Chinese observers who used it could glean remarkably accurate information. They could detect earthquakes as far away as Vietnam and gather data similar to what modern day geologists look for. Also, we have the magical gem which was used in navigation. The ancient Norse described a magical gem that determined the sun's position, even when it was obscured, and enabled sailors to precisely navigate the high seas. 
While stories about such a gem seem akin to Thor's hammer, a 2013 discovery revealed that they were true. The mythical sunstone was made of calcite, a crystal that could determine the sun's location even behind clouds. Its secret lies in its ability to double reflect sunlight, enabling navigation with a high degree of accuracy. To the ancients using a stone, it may have truly appeared to be magic. Next up is the first battery, which may be over 2,000 years old. The Baghdad battery was discovered in 1936 in a Paleolithic village outside of modern day city of Baghdad, Iraq. There were multiple batteries, each consisting of a clay pot with a copper cylinder running its length. Inside the copper, the cylinder was an iron rod held in place with asphalt. In 1938, one of the researchers who performed the excavation theorized that the strange clay pots were old batteries. The theory was proven to be true when experiments about a decade later revealed that the pots generated two volts of electricity when filled with an electrolyte fluid. But we still have no idea what these batteries powered. Nothing beats Damascus steel, and we don't know what it really is. During the Crusades, European warriors who returned from fighting Muslim armies in the Middle East carried stories of the unbeatable weapons that the Muslim soldiers used. The swords made of so-called Damascus steel might as well have been lightsabers due to the damage that they could cause. We have no idea how Damascus steel was made or what it was even composed of. It may have been made by smelting iron with plant matter, which would have given it the flexibility seen in the anecdotal accounts. But we still don't know what the plant matter may have been or the process that the blacksmiths used to create Damascus steel. Up next, Viking swords, an ancient technology that we still have no clue how it works today. According to Viking law, all free men were mandated to have a weapon and be prepared for war 24-7. One of the oldest Viking swords discovered dates from about 750 AD, and the Ulfbert swords in particular raised many questions. The first question is how they were made, considering that the technology didn't exist for more than 800 years after that. In 2014, a Viking sword was discovered that bore an Arabic inscription, lending credence to the idea that the Viking swords may have been made with Damascus steel. But how did they get the recipe and how did the Vikings and Arabs engage and trade with each other when an entire continent in the Mediterranean separate them? We still don't know. Also, we have the Faustos disc. In 1908, excavations in the Minoan Old Place in Crete led to discovering a fire-baked clay disc that was discovered with ancient symbols. The 243 inscriptions occur in a spiral pattern, and the disc was likely forged by hand. Researchers don't really know what the function of the Faustos disc was, but some suggest that it was a type of proto-alphabet composed of syllabary rather than letters. This has led some to suggest that it served as an ancient typewriter, but others believe that the inscriptions may be an ancient prayer. Next is the ancient Indian flying machine, which continues to boggle minds to this day. A book written in India in 400 BCE describes in detail flying machines known as Vimanas. The author, Maharshi Bhadwaj, described how to steer them, what pilots did to prepare for long flights, and how the ships were propelled through the air, how pilots protected the ships from storms, and even how to switch the machines to solar energy. The drawings and descriptions of Vimanas still have researchers completely stumped. Some insist that aliens gave the prototypes to the ancient Indians, while others believe the ancient flying machines have to be hoaxes. Others think there is a perfectly logical explanation, though we still don't know what it is. Finally, we have the oldest telescope, which may be three millennia old. Move over Galileo. In 1850, archaeologists digging in ancient Assyrian ruins in modern-day Iraq unearthed a 3,000-year-old lens made of rock crystal. In the time since its discovery, researchers have attempted to explain its function. Perhaps it was a magnifying glass with the resolution of 3x. Perhaps it was a burning glass that could focus the rays of the sun into starting a fire. But some researchers believe that the Nimrod lens was actually part of an ancient telescope. This could explain the Assyrians' advanced astronomical knowledge knowledge, along with Galileo's assertion that the ancients had to have also had these telescopes. There are many great things to learn from these ancient technologies, and hopefully a few of these examples and discoveries I've shown you today have given you some insights about them. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel, and then click the bell icon to get new video updates.